These are pre-loved records. They've all been deep cleaned and graded. Which is why a psychiatrist examined Katie Campbell to determine that she understands her duty to the truth. I'm sure that people won't mind if I do that myself. Oh, it's not necessary. But again, it's in my court. Produce the girl and I can make a swear to the examination in chambers. By the way, Miss Lomax, when you appear in the court, I appreciate you address the court. I mean, in the spirit, and the answer. If you told us about something you did not see or hear, would that be the truth or a lie? Do you understand the question? Speak aloud. What do I can show the witnesses I have to ask the question? If you came into court, raised your right hand, and you swore to tell the truth, and you told a lie, what do you think would happen? Do you know what the word truth means? Thank you for the experience. Well, I think that answers the question of swearability. With all due respect, Your Honor, I was confused by his questions. I wouldn't go around admitting that, Miss Novak. The defense moves for dismissal, Your Honor, are not for the purposes of this. You want to say she can't testify, she just can't be sworn. Her statement can be corroborated by the detergent found in the victim's stomach. Evidence which also corroborates an accidental ingestion. You might. Why don't we let the jury decide? Mr. Gates, I don't find to agree with Ms. Novak. Then I move to suppress the girl's testimony, Your Honor. She spoke with an SVU detective alone. Well, that's representative. That's standard procedure. Child witnesses don't need parental supervision. I can't assure that anything this girl said wasn't influenced by the police. SVU detectives are trained to interview children. And I'd love to hear all about that. I'm wondering how you can hear what the detective proves he didn't tell you this can't say. I'm a lot of testimony. At any point during your questioning of Katie Campbell, did you suggest her mother was responsible for poisoning the victim? No. In fact, Katie and Mr. Woodard in the conversation that had been prompted. Did you vilify or criticize her mother in a way that would influence your son? Of course, I'm not familiar with the defendant. Nothing further, Your Honor. I haven't heard the audio tape from this one, too. Standard procedure does not require police to record any of these witnesses. Not for me. So, if you make a mistake, no one will hear it. If you make a mistake, in general, if a child is injured, who's your first suspect? Depends on the circumstances. Ah, Detective, isn't it true you don't have a parent's recording of the situation you wanted? Yes. Are you out to get Karen Campbell? Didn't you tell my client that if you had anything to do with it, she'd never see her kids again? That's out of context. Yes or no, Detective? Yes. So it sounds like you had some pretty strong feelings about my client's guilt the moment you met her. My feelings have nothing to do with any of this. Now, you assumed my client was guilty, and that influenced how you questioned her seven-year-old daughter. That's completely false, and I have nothing in it. Thank you, Detective. Nothing further. Excuse, Detective. Ms. Novak, I'm afraid the people haven't met their burden, including the end who wasn't suggested before the defense motion to suppress the witness's testimony is granted. It's a joke. I beg your pardon, Detective Stabler. 
He said, this is a joke. You'd be wise to remember no one cares what you think once you're on that box again. It's a joke. Stop. Judges who think cops to all armed witnesses in order to make their case. What, you think I just bullied a seven-year-old in the line? No, I didn't leave. No, I didn't stay. And these are some of the new ones that I've got today the that are not on the site yet. All new and sealed. That your conduct indicates a clear bias for the defense. Accusing yourself now preserves the appearance of partiality in front of this court. 